everyone. Thank you for joining us here today from 66 countries around the world. I'm Fabiana Bacchini, mother of a surviving twin born at 26 weeks gestation and executive director of the Canadian Premature Babies Foundation. It's such an honor for me to be here today disseminating knowledge and raising awareness about such an important topic as kangaroo care and skin to skin. Here in Canada, we continue to educate parents on the importance of skin to skin for babies born preterm and advocate for this practice. We believe that only with continuous education for, born, for bedside nurses and other healthcare providers in the ICU, skin to skin contact can become common practice for all preterm babies. And I have here joined me live from Brazil. Uh, Denise Sugitani, Executive Director of the Brazilian Parents of Premise Association. Denise, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you, Fabi. I'm really honored to have the opportunity to contribute to such a relevant session with experts that me and everyone in the prematurity world admire so much for their work. So kangaroo care in Brazil, as well as the skin-to-skin -skin practice, is widely disseminated. It's a public health policy, which takes care of the families and uh, women, pregnant women uh, from pregnancy to after discharge. But we still need to improve that a lot. So we are, wor we are working on it. Uh, so, yeah, we have uh, like a thousand babies being born prematurely every day here in Brazil. So it's a very special topic for us, too. Um, so thank you, EFCNI, for the invitation today and for all the support you give to all organizations uh, as like ours, uh, mine and Fabiana's. And thank you, Fabi and CPBF team for enabling this, this event to happen. Uh, now I want to introduce you to Miss Silke Mother. Uh, she is a mother of twins. She is the founder of the European Foundation of for the Care of Newborn Infants, EFCNI, who began all this movement, all this global initiative for the World Prematurity Day back in 2008. So welcome and over to you, Silke. Thank you so much for this nice introduction, Denise, and also Fabiana from my side. Thank you for helping us coordinating this session today and bringing together all these experts in the kangaroo mother care community. The topic from World Prematurity Day this year is a parent embrace a powerful therapy, enable skin to skin contact from the moment of birth. Why we have chosen this topic? We have chosen this topic together with all these international organizations like WHO and UNICEF and our parent organization community. One of the big reasons why we have chosen it is that we still are in the pandemic where parents are separated and where skin to skin care is not possible everywhere in the world. In the meanwhile, only 20% of the countries are really practice, practicing skin-to-skin -skin care regularly and really rarely at the moment of birth. That was one of the reasons why we have chosen it, and we hope that the NICUs are more and more going up the doors and welcoming parents again 24-7. But why at the moment of birth and why skin-to-skin -skin care? Skin-to-skin -skin care is not only important for the emotional part and talking about emotions in this field, it is really evidence-based medicine in the meanwhile. And this is also why we call it therapy, because it reduces the mortality of 40%. Uh, it reduces the infection um, rates and sepsis, for example, by 65% and hypothermia by 72%. So the bonding aspect is, of course, one issue between the mother and the baby and, of course, also the father. But the mother has a very special role in this case because she even, even can control the temperature when um, the baby is going cold or, or, or warm, then she can control this. That's something what is what is in the nature of us humans that the mother can do this. It is also important about the long-term outcome and the improvement of the baby, but also the parents. And we, of course, and this is very obvious, it supports breastfeeding. And we all know how important breastfeeding is, not only for the, the, the emotional part and for feed the baby, but uh, breastfeeding, especially for preterm infants, is important to reduce the risk 
on uh, necrotizing enterocolitis and of course uh, on mortality. So therefore, it's absolutely key to provide skin-to-skin -skin care and even more kangaroo mother care. And therefore, it's a perfect link to my first speaker. And I'm very proud that we can um, could invite uh, Dr. Natalie Karpak. She is uh, a scientific coordinator of the three kangaroo mother care centers of excellence in Colombia. Um, Natalie is a pediatrician and her, made her degrees and also her medical education in uh, Paris and France. She migrated to Colombia in 1986, where she began to work on the evaluation of kangaroo mother care methodology. Since 1994, she is the co-founder and the director and senior researcher of the Foundation Kangaroo, an organization dedicated to promoting kangaroo mother care for preterm and low birth infants worldwide. She is also a co-creator of the International Kangaroo Network and Alliance devoted to collaborating, enhancing and disseminating the kangaroo mother care methodology. And I'm happy, Natalie, that you are with us today and give, can give us a more, more and bigger insight of this methodology because, as I know, there is a difference and you will explain how it is. So the floor is yours. Thank you, Natalie, for coming. Thank you for inviting me to speak about kangaroo mother care. Yes, it is a, a 30 years of research and diffusion of kangaroo mother care. And uh, I don't know if I can have my slides. It's possible? OK. So uh, wh why I am asking for my slides? Because uh, uh, we are speaking about kangaroo mother care. And what is kangaroo mother care? Kangaroo mother care, it's not only the skin to skin contact. I call it a kangaroo position because you, you put the baby in a special position and uh, uh, to have the skin-to-skin -skin contact. It's kangaroo nutrition. It's early discharge in kangaroo position at home in close ambulatory follow-up. It's for all the preterm and low birth weight infants. It is like this in Colombia. And you have uh, two steps, one in the hospital, then one at home with a follow-up in a kangaroo mother care program. Uh, where are you going to initiate a kangaroo mother care? You are going to begin with the position and the nutrition, if it's possible, in the delivery room, or perhaps if it's not possible in the NICU, or it's a neonatal unit, or in the obstetric world. I mean, the most important thing is to begin kangaroo as soon as possible and for as long as possible. So you have hundreds of papers highlighting all the benefits of initiating kangaroo mother care at birth. And what is the problem? The problem is it, it's only one baby on four newborn who are going to have a kangaroo mother care at birth. Even if you have all these benefits, it's not, e it's not enough to convince that uh, you must do it. For this reason, we are dedicated to research. And what uh, it's clear is that intervention after birth should try to create in an environment that sensorially stimulates the preterm infant. Not, um, uh, I will say, not uh, uh, to, to protect him. I, I cannot put him back in the womb once you treat him, but you must try for this baby not to be stressed. And what it has been shown is that an impoverished environment leads to an increased risk of cognitive deficits. For this reason, we are fighting. Look at this photo. It's 10 years ago, and it was courtoisie of uh, Dr. Ruval, the chief of the department in Uppsala. Uh, in Uppsala, you can see this 26 weeks twins uh, in intensive care unit there. So KMC performed by parents with zero separation from birth to NICU is one of the intervention proposed has neuroprotection for this immature child. Why I'm speaking about neuroprotection? Because as pediatrician or neonatologists, we, we were thinking in the lungs. 
and we have the surfactant. And we were seeking in the guts, and now we have the mother milk. But we forget to think in the immature brain of this baby. Yes, in the last trimester, you have a lot of things uh, which are happening. You have the brain growth, yes, multiplied by 1.5, and the cortex superficie by four. And it's exactly when the baby is with us from 26 to 40. So kangaroo is a perfect and permanent stimulation of the neurosensory system and of the brain of this infant. You have vestibular stimulation with a movement of respiration of the mother. You have tactile stimulation with the skin contact, the heat. You have olfactive stimulation with the odor of the skin of the parents, the milk odor. You have auditory stimulation with the voice and the heart of the mother. You have the visual stimulation with the contact during breastfeeding and during the position. And you have proprioceptive stimulation with the contention. We use a licra wand that's very important between uh, the breast of the mother. So what we were able to demonstrate, I will not show you results, only this. We were able to demonstrate that the volume of the brain, the volume of the gray matter, the volume of the cortex are higher in the kangaroo group 20 years after uh, the kangaroo uh, during the perinatal period. It was a beautiful study and each time we are, uh, we are going to publish more papers because we go slowly, but we are finding a new inside, new results on white matter also in a court of young adults who were randomized 20 years before between kangaroo and no kangaroo. What can we do? change the way we think, change the chip. Yes, from this to this or to this. Yes, look at this mother, relaxation. So what kangaroo is doing is uh, empowerment of the family. It's an emotional empowerment where they feel ready to take care of the baby, operational empowerment where they learn to be ready to take care to of their baby. So parents before were considered as spectators, but now they are the main provider of the care of the fragile infant. We are responsible to teach and to support them in the hospital. Parents cannot be visitor, no more. Yes, we must recognize that once trained, they are the best, they are the experts to take care of the baby, and we must accept their autonomy everywhere anywhere father infant kangaroo mother care that's very important we found interesting results look at this sentence of a mother in spain doing kangaroo has been jumping from being preoccupied to being occupied taking care of my baby yes or oh, doing kangaroo is like taking an antidepressive drug and we are doing early discharge at home with ambulatory follow-up in Colombia since, since ever. So, yeah, and you can see ambulatory program where the mother is coming. It's a shared job for the mother and the father, but it's a few weeks at home. It will be one month at home or one month and a half. Yes, up the moment the baby has to go out, they'll come back to the consultation. We send baby with oxygen at home. Look how they are sleeping. Thank you very much. So this sentence is important too. It takes a long time to transform a new idea into reality. I guess I, you haven't heard me. I would just want to thank you for your really fantastic presentation and also to showing what is possible and um, to really implement kangaroo mother care. And what we have um, learned a lot in the last years that this is not only a methodology only for emotions, it's really medical uh, treatment what here is provided and this is why it is so important. What we have heard 
also when we discussed about the slogan of World Prematurity Day, um, that there's a lot of confusion between the word you said fathers with kangaroo mother care. And then yesterday we got a message like, can we not call it kangaroo partner care or parents care? Or can we not call it only kangaroo care or skin to skin? So there is a lot of confusion. Maybe you can help us in what does this mean, this kangaroo mother care? You explained it a little bit that this is the kangaroo care, but also the breastfeeding, but also fathers can provide kangaroo mother care. Maybe you can explain a little bit to the audience why always this wording confusion is, but what does it mean at the end? Look, what is the true is uh, the mother is uh, responsible. Yes, the father is going to help her and the grandmother and mother-in-law, but the one who is uh, giving breast, and it's a big job when they are premature infant, the one who is uh, uh, responsible is the mother for this reason, uh, we we didn't change anything. It's kangaroo mother care. Yes, even if the father is doing a, a kangaroo uh, position because he will not give the breast, we are agree on that. But uh, um, the one who is still the responsible, uh, what we saw in our family, it's the mother. So we want uh, to recognize that. Uh, letting uh, we want to call it kangaroo mother care we will not change because she is uh, responsible exactly but you also recommend that fathers or other family members if the mother for example is very sick in the beginning that also the fathers or other family members can hold the baby and provide kangaroo care or can mother is a father and we we found a very interesting result when the father is carrying the baby during the neonatal period during the year, it's a different father. He's uh, uh, buying tools, more in development for his infant. He's more present. He will come to the consultation. And at one year, we have a difference. And what we found at 20 years is that uh, you have more original family when the father was participating to kangaroo mother care. Let's, less separation. That's funny. We were not looking for that, but we found that. I think uh, it was significant. So it's a uh, funny. I, I think it's very important for the father to participate because yeah. he will respect more uh, his wife because he will uh, share a big work. He, he will discover the work of uh, kangaroo mother care. Yeah, and it just gets also important for the bonding between the father and the baby. So to have in the end a good bonding with the baby that's also for the fathers themselves and of course also for the baby important isn't it yes yeah clear, clear. <laughs> so what uh you said that kangaroo care is um has so many benefits maybe you can just summarize um for the audience what you think are the greatest or the most important benefits what kangaroo care or kangaroo mother care in the end provide for the baby and for the whole family and even maybe for the staff but, you know, I think kangaroo mother care is a very special intervention because it's benefits for everybody. First for the baby, then for the mother and the father, then for the hospital. Because when you do an early discharge with kangaroo care, you have less infection in the neonatal unit. You have a, you have a big change and the participation of the family is different. It's a different neonatal unit. Yes, and you have for the society because what is true if it's if we can receive this baby without with the less stress possible and doing that be able to protect for example his brain to grow like to reach term like a term baby or similar to a term baby really everybody has benefits i mean for me it's so difficult to understand why doing 30 years of research and you show uh, you don't have any more hypo you don't have risk uh, of hypothermia, of hypoglycemia, you have less infection, the baby will grow better, his brain is better, with the milk of his mother, you don't have enterocolitis uh, necrotizing, you have better, the bonding is better, and even with all this, we have resistance. Yeah, but this yeah. is a very good point, Natalie. What do you think is the reason of this big resistance? Is it to 
um, well, evidence is there. So it's it's more convincing the colleagues in the NICUs or it is because of the people are worried to put out this tiny little baby on the chest of the parents. So what do you think is the main resistance of why nurses and doctors and even hospital administrators are not welcoming parents 24-7 and providing in the end the kangaroo mother care therapy? Because I think that... Uh... Uh, since the beginning, uh, a kangaroo was presented as a, a, a low-man alternative, low-tech alternative for country where you don't have incubators. So uh, it was uh, it was presented like this, and uh, people learn uh, to see it like this. I think it will be very important to put kangaroo mother care in the curriculum of. Uh, of doctors and pediatricians and neonatologists has a routine care to do in the unit. I think it, it would be very important because uh, with kangaroo, you have all the uh, all, uh, academic part very important. And I think that if you can, we can begin to put it in the curriculum, we can have a change. Because uh, um, uh, the second thing is a, a power relation to between parents and the staff so uh, it, it's something that we must work yes uh, parents cannot be visitor parents are the parents of the infant so they will say no space nothing is done so they cannot stay so you have a lot of uh, what we must learn is to listen what people is going to say and to try to solve the problems with patients but uh, i really believe that with all these benefits uh, demonstrate it's an evidence-based intervention now it's not ethical not to do it especially with the result results we have on brain i think that we cannot avoid to do kangaroo now has doctor has neonatologist pediatrician nurse everybody yes so that was a challenge to demonstrate that it's not any more ethical because we know the results yeah, exactly. And I guess that brings us now also to our next speaker. Thank you so much, Natalie. And maybe for the audience, Natalie will come back uh, at the end of the sessions. We have a common discussion. So please feel free to put also your questions in the uh, question area. And uh, now I have the pleasure to introduce our next uh, speaker for today. And this is Diane Schulz. Um, she is a registered nurse and a certificate, uh, certified kangaroo caregiver. Um, she has worked in the neonatal intensive care unit at the St. Boniface Hospital in Winnipeg, Canada for more than 33 years. Diane is teaching um, kangaroo care to all levels in the NICUs and as well within the labor and delivery department. Because when we want to have um, kangaroo mother care from the beginning of birth, then it's important to involve also this kind of caregivers. And what is really impressive that she has also is a co-creator of a video calls, what do what to do when it's time to kangaroo. And um, we will see also in the very beginning. So hello, Diane, good to have you with us. We have uh, already a small snippet um, of the video you have um, co-produced and co-created with your colleagues and what, how you show how you have implemented this really in your, your everyday practice. And this brings maybe then to the next part of the bridge where we can um, see what is needed to implement it, what's important for doing this. So I'm happy to have you with us, Diane, and I would then um, ask the organizers to start with the video. And um, yeah, and this helps us for sure for the, for the next discussion we have then together. Thank you.
I always get goosebumps when I see your video and um, it's just so emotional for me having not this experience, but seeing now what is possible and what you are doing there. And it's really fantastic. Thank you so much for all the work you are doing here. And maybe that's also to bridge from the previous questions to here and seeing this video. And you also were not able, I would say, from day one to really do this when you're working already 33 years and doing this. So what would you say are the the biggest misconceptions or barriers or where you struggled in your work uh, with your colleagues, the healthcare professionals, maybe the neonatologist or even the obstetrician for the moment of birth to kangaroo or your nurses. So, and how did you overcome this? I, that would be very interesting when you see all this video. First of all, thank you for inviting me. Um, I think we're always going to have some sort of barrier to this. And I agree with what Dr. Charpak said is everything has become so medicalized that simply holding your baby, people, I, I wonder if they don't fully believe the benefits of it because the benefits are huge and it is therapy and it's something so important that our parents can do and only our parents can do. So space can be, can, can be a barrier, but in my unit, we're a very tightly spaced unit. We have four pods, we, we're open pods. And we make every effort to do as much skin to skin kangaroo care as possible, even with our very fragile infants. So, but I agree there, I think there will always be barriers, but we need people to speak up. So we need champions in the unit. We also need our preemie parents to speak up and share their knowledge with other parents and other uh, parents who have had term babies, because skin to skin is very important for our term babies too, just not our premature babies. Yeah. And did you then provide in the end uh, trainings um, for your colleagues that this was not only done when you were on shift, for example, or the colleagues who really were keen to do to provide kangaroo care so that you really bring the people into the boat? I mean, in a bigger unit, they work over 100, 120 people. So you need to convince many of them. So did you made a, I would say, a training program or how was this done? So because many people also, of course, want to know how you, you made it possible. Right. So now we're, we're much better now. When we first started, we had heard Dr. Susan Luddington speak. There was about 12 of us. And it really changed our outlook on what skin to skin kangaroo care meant. And we kind of came back as nurses and kind of made everyone do it without giving them proper education, which was not fair. So we did have some people that were concerned about what we were doing. So, and the, the more we researched it, we figured, and we realized we need to educate our staff and support our staff in why we do kangaroo care and how to do it safely. So now we're at the process where all levels of care in our unit gets, gets educated on the benefits, but also gets get educated on the transfer techniques. And for our very fragile infants, we include our respiratory therapists in, in the transfer because they're a very important process too. We make sure that we educate our parents on the benefits of kangaroo care and then the transfer techniques as well. So it's taken us about 12 years to get to this point. So you do need to have support by your management, your hospital, which we do, because they were the ones that helped us create the video but you also have to have champions inside your unit that will be there as mentors for the staff who are just new to uh, kangaroo care and the transfer techniques. So we have numerous champions who are wonderful helps at the bedside. And you can always go to those champions at any time and ask questions. Mm -hmm. So we do make sure, uh, the, like I educate on it, but I'm also a bedside nurse. So I'm always there for questions or concerns. And we make every effort to make the parent part of this process too, because the parent is the most important caregiver at the bedside, not the healthcare professionals. It's the parents because they're here for the long term and they will be taking these babies home and need to be the advocate. So they really need to know why they do kangaroo care or skin to skin and how to do it safely. Thank you. I also like this, what, what you said that you took these uh, concerns really serious and, and help them to overcome because it's a very important to not put pressure on people where they are concerned or where they don't um, what, what see this critical because um, this needs time. And I like that you mm -hmm. said also that took you 
12 years through this journey to really be able, able even to transfer the smaller ones to and to take other experts into this process. There's also one question from the audience already to you, Diane, is um, do you transfer babies out for skin to skin with umbilical lines? Uh, yes, we do. We tend to not do fresh lines. So in the first 24 hours, we usually don't bring those babies out if they have fresh umbilical lines. We bring, there's very few times when we don't do skin to skin in our unit. That's probably easier to explain. Um, for babies born less than 27 weeks, we tend to keep them midline for the first 72 hours because of evidence of prevention of IVH. But in our, in our unit, we have a caveat that if you have a stable 26 weeker who is on CPAP, after 24 hours, you can have the discussion of kangaroo care. Our actively cooling babies, for, when they're cooled for the 72 hours, we don't do skin to skin either, but those parents are encouraged to touch their baby and even hold with the cooling blanket. Mm -hmm. um, we do not do babies with chest tubes just because of the fear of dislodgement mm -hmm. and pain for the baby. So, and because of our transfer technique, we used to do the parent transfer with our, with our fragile infants. And we would have parents that would do amazing transfers, but you run the risk of that uh, intubation tube coming out. And we wanted to take over the transfer technique and make sure it was done slowly and safely. And so if something did happen, that wouldn't fall on parents and they wouldn't have guilt if something mm -hmm. did happen. Yeah, so, and we true. worked very hard at making sure we do it well. I see there was a question about recommended time. When I talk to parents, I talk about brain maturation. You want those babies to go through a sleep cycle and babies born less than 33 weeks have a, have a longer time. So 70 to 90 minutes is a sleep cycle. Whereas term babies, it's generally around 60 minutes. So what we kind of push now is we ask for a minimum of 90 minutes. There is no maximum time though. I've, I've started IVs and done blood collections while, parent, while babies have been skin to skin. We can change diapers, we can feed babies. So there really is no maximum time. It's just a question of what your unit is comfortable doing if you have lab work to be done or different things. But the minimum we ask for our parents is 90 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Is there also something because some units they tell um, us um, sometimes, yeah, you cannot, we cannot provide this for example, not in the nights or also not a long time during the day because we are scared that the baby um, fells um, um, from the chest or whatever. Is there anything what you can recommend um, that parents feel safer and more relaxed when they kangaroo or even also the stuff that the baby really is safe on the chest of the parents? Yeah. So we have open vis uh, visiting, but we don't consider our parents visitors. So our parents have access 24 hours a day. And we have many parents that do skin to skin throughout the night if they happen to be there. We have specific Lafuma anti-gravity uh, hospital grade chairs that we use. And we make sure those parents are as comfortable as possible once they're in the chairs. We prop their arms up because your arms will get tired the longer you hold mm -hmm. onto that baby. We also help to, if the baby is intubated or on CPAP, we secure all the tubing too. And our babies are monitored the whole time that they are in kangaroo care. So we're always there to watch them and help them. Yeah, great. And before we call Natalie back to our group for a common discussion, I also have a question uh, at the end for you. When you um, when when you hear maybe from uh, people they want to start with a kangaroo care methodology in their uh, unit or kangaroo mother care with this whole complexity and breastfeeding and everything around, what would you recommend your colleagues how to start or how to convince the others? Is there anything where you, when you look back how you started and um, uh, recommend and train also other uh, colleagues. Is there anything where you said this are the, I would say, first five were big tips I would give you to not make the same pitfalls as you or maybe experiences you have where you said that is a good idea to start? Mm -hmm. I know every unit in every country is different and in Canada every province is, is different too. But I would make sure that you get as much knowledge of the benefits and the research behind it and so you have that knowledge to back you up if you have to present it at, at, um, to management or whoever. Also, too, you do need champions in your unit who believe in it. In our unit, it's actually very good to have people who 
need to be convinced because they keep the champions accountable because I'm just so gung-ho about skin to skin. I do need somebody to question me every now and then because I'll just push it a little too much sometimes. So, but you do need supportive management. You should have the research and the, and the, uh, the knowledge behind before you start. You definitely need champions that can be there at the bedside to mentor. But the parents also need to fully believe that they are an important part of the team and that what they're doing is therapy. They really need to believe it too. So. Yeah, I also like the idea of the champions. We in Germany, we have this, for example, not in the UK, it's quite usual. So this is maybe also something we can think about also in the parent community, how can we find and identify uh, champions? So maybe Fabiana, you can bring us Natalie back, but here's maybe one question for you, how you um, manage in the end the humidity when the baby is outside um, and uh, and is kangarooing and to get enough um yeah humidity that it keeps warm and so on then do you um when we do little babies that are in humidity they still come out for skin to skin so the skin that is touching the mother is is well thermoregulated but we make sure every part that isn't touching mother is covered up so yeah so welcome back natalie um we uh, we would like now to discuss some of the questions maybe together. And I have one um, key question, what I would like to ask you both, um, because you have so much experience, you have so much implemented already standards or protocols in your um, unit. So how much would you think is it important to develop or to develop standards on your unit or um, a unit uh, protocol and how to bring this protocol as paper document into practice. So how important do you see this? I don't know if you, Natalie, want to start and maybe then ask the same question. You don't know? I believe that uh, if you want to do Kangaroo Mother Care, you must have a protocol. Mm -hmm. And you must have a protocol for intensive care unit and a protocol for uh, uh, intermediary care and a protocol for Kangaroo in the delivery room. That's very important because it is a unique way not to depend on people, but to introduce Kangaroo Mother Care as a routine. So you must have protocols and everybody must be agree uh, the different shift, not only in the morning, in the afternoon and at night. And the other thing I will say, not thinking of kangaroo only with a 26 or 27, but to think in kangaroo for a 33, a 34, he's premature. He has the right not to be stressed, to be in kangaroo mother care. Usually they will stay up to 38 weeks. So for this reason, it must be a routine in the unit for mm -hmm. all premature and lupus weight infant. That's the most difficult thing to do. You don't have a lot, very little. You have a lot here. So the late three terms, exactly. Yeah. So Diane, you also agree on this? Yes, our guideline. Yeah, we do all, all babies other than the ones I stated. But yeah, you, those 33, 34 weekers are so important. And we will do those ones if they don't require any respiratory support. We will do those in the delivery room. And we try and make sure they get a, a good half an hour before they get admitted. And then we bring father with us too. But it's very important to have guidelines. Our old guideline used to say if baby was stable. And we took the word stable out because it just gave people too many excuses to not do it. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're very particular in how we word things. And we do have a standard work protocol for the transfer techniques that we use. And then you have a briefing process beforehand include with every members of the team, including those parents. And then you have a debriefing afterwards. What went well? How could we improve? I encourage our parents to be the experts on the transfer because they're the ones that are there every day. They're the ones watching the transfer, participating in it. I could not have their baby for two weeks and come back. They are the experts when it comes to things. So they can tell me, when we transferred the baby, this worked well, this one didn't work so much. So they are they are our knowledge keepers at the bedside and we really use, need to use our parents as much as possible. Yeah. 
I was reminded to also mention here that um, the video, what you have seen before as a short clip, is there is a long version available on YouTube, and we also will put it into the comments so that everyone can also watch it then afterwards. And um, another question, what I was thinking when we prepared um, these presentations today, um, there is um, a huge difference between low and low middle income countries to provide kangaroo mother care. And as you, Natalie, already said, that was also in the previous years, maybe the reason why they have not yeah, implemented it because they thought it is for the low and low middle income countries. So here we have not this kind of discussions of welcoming parents 24 seven because they need them. They need to keep the baby warm. So they need the chest of the mom as a kind of incubator. But when it comes to middle, middle high income and high industry, countries, then we have really a, a problem of getting the kangaroo mother care or kangaroo care um, into practice. And the argumentation we often hear is there is no space, there is no facilities, we have not, um, we have not maybe a reception at the, at the hospital where parents can be there 24 seven. What are your argumentations, I would say even against or what what, what do you recommend to have um, the, the parents really there? And even when there is no space. I don't know, Diana, want, do you want to start? Uh, well, like I said, we're a very tightly spaced unit and we bring babies out on the jet ventilator all the time. We bring out twins that are on the jet ventilator. So you just have to really kind of open up your mind and figure out how, how can you make this happen? What do you need to do to make this happen? Because it is so very important. Natalie, do you want to? I believe that one of the reasons too is, uh, you know, kangaroo mother care, when a uh, uh, big NGO began to use it, uh, the first impact in low, mid, in low income country was on mortality because uh, mortality was mainly by hypothermia, uh, hypoglycemia, sepsis. And so this baby doing kangaroo mother care, you have a, a very big impact on mortality. So for high middle and high income country, they were thinking for us mortality, we don't have a high mortality. That's not our problem. But uh, that's not true. I, in the way, well, it's true and it's not true in the way that you don't act only on mortality, but on morbidity, on bonding, on maturation of the brain, all the benefits who are demonstrated now. So really, kangaroo mother care, it's for everybody. Yes, uh, I think it's, uh, we have to think it as a routine for the care of the premature and low birth weight infant. Yes, and uh, actually, um, I, I am feeling very bad because uh, WHO will publish uh, that uh, kangaroo mother care must begin since the beginning, uh, since the beginning and 24 hours and go in the NICU that you must modify your NICU to have an individual room and this kind of things. And this kind, it will be rich country only because you have a lot of middle in, uh, income country in South America who already uh, did the new unit and you, you cannot, uh, you will not have money to modify that. So we have to think how to do it with a comfortable chair. It doesn't mind the space. You have to think how can I do Congo, but it's going to be a problem. Yes, so I'm a little bit upset for this reason because it costs a lot to do neonatal uh, intensive care unit with individual room. So I, I think we have to speak about these kind of problems. Yes, it's important. It's absolutely right. So there are already a lot of questions in the chat, but uh, we also come shortly to the end. Um, so at one question um, I would like to ask you um, before we um, close in the end this session is, as you know, we have or we demand in our World Prematurity Day message this year that skin to skin care should be provided at the moment of birth. I mean, we, we want to have this even for the very tiny ones. And what is needed? Uh, what would be your recommendation to really be able to start in the delivery room with skin to skin care? What would be your recommendation, Diane? Um, 
for our hospital, I think it would be a little more space in the delivery room because the mother alone takes up so much space. Um, we do transfer babies to our unit already on CPAP or intubated. So if we had if we had a little more space in the delivery room, but I think we would need to have all all the uh, medical and obstetrics all on board too. It would have to be big discussions to make sure everyone's in agreement and how could we do this safely? Because if we are going to do it, it needs to be done safely. Anthony? I think we will need the results of the Epistos study. No, We need the results of immediate kangaroo mother care uh, uh, from the delivery room to the NICU, how it was done, uh, which baby could not go, because it's a big change to say that you must use kangaroo mother care to stabilize the baby. That's another chip too, a lot of chips to change here, because it's not the stable baby, it's to stabilize the baby. So uh, that's what WHO is going to publish. So I think it's a, rev it's a revolution, but a very interesting revolution. Yeah, because the idea really is to try to protect, to use kangaroo mother care since the beginning and to protect this baby, not only the brain, everything. Mm -hmm. Because uh, thinking that if you can do it immediately, do the support of the skin to skin uh, on the mother, this baby will be stable, better and before. So I think we have, we need the result of these studies and they are going to be presented no, in November in Madrid in the Mondial Congress of Kangaroo Mother Care. So uh, um, we are all very interested. I mean, uh, because it's a change of cheap and we have to work on that. Because for people, not stable baby, you resuscitate, you do, you cannot do kangaroo. So yeah, we, yeah. I'm agree with uh, Diane, we have to look at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And um, it is so important really to talk and continuously talk about it. And also in our working groups at uh, the World Health Organization, we could, when I just think about how I started 10 years ago around uh, working with WHO and now having more and more experts and also convincing the people to to move on and to implement in the ending guideline. It is a, a long way to go. I know this, my son is 25 years old now, and um, but we should never give up. And we have so many experts in the meanwhile who are standing up. And I love, as I told you before, the, the word champion. We need champion and ambassadors to talk about this issue. And there is also one very urgent question from Yemen. And I think that's also important to um, listen what uh, challenges they face. Um, the, the person is asking, I'm working in Yemen and exposing the body is very challenging. Do you have any advice? I don't know who can answer this question. But to, it's possible to put uh, something for the intimacy. I mean, how do you call that? Uh, this, uh, uh, to, um, Caravan. You know, yeah, it's possible to put something and so you have the father and the mother only in this little space and if you can move it, it's even better. I mean, uh, you can find solution uh, like this, a solution for the others not to see the mother when she's carrying the baby. There is no problem. Yeah, in our unit, we have curtains at every bedside and now we have discussions with our staff and our families about cultural awareness, but also trauma awareness, because many women and men have experienced trauma in their life and may not be comfortable exposing their body. Mm -hmm. So it's important to have that conversation with the parents too. Are you comfortable doing this? And if not, how can we help you do this safely so you feel comfortable? So that's a very good point. Yes. Yeah. And thank you also for this question. So to summarize and also to close today's meeting is, first of all, a big thank you to you, Diane and uh, Natalie, for being with us and explaining in the end what you are doing, but also why it is so important to provide kangaroo mother care and what kind of experiences you can share with the colleagues who have attended today. And um, we all, I guess, know now in the meanwhile more what's the difference between kangaroo mother care and that kangaroo mother care can also 
be supported from fathers that they kangaroo, but the kangaroo mother care is an own concept, including the concept of 24 seven, the parents have access to the baby. That means breastfeeding is supported and provided. And even after discharge, the kangaroo mother care concept should continue to really get this baby not only to survive, but to thrive and to support the parents. So therefore, I strongly recommend to really provide skin to skin care from the moment of birth. But even after discharge, that's maybe one of the key messages we would like to thank um, the speakers to provide this information and also to Diane in showing with a video what can be possible and sharing also this experience that it needs time to convince people in the team to educate and train and to really make this journey possible even for the ones who are skeptical or need um, more more support or even have concerns that you not should give up and also not put pressure on them so to really bring everyone into the boat to provide in the end the kangaroo mother care concept to all babies born preterm and not what Natalie said only the tiny ones because this is a smaller group so we talk about kangaroo mother care for really for the whole babies born preterm and so this is maybe also one of the key messages today finally i would like to thank also fabiana and um, denise for co a co work with us here together in this um, session for tonight and i also would like to warmly thank my own team especially aurelia and sara from my team who have worked so hard for making this possible and to you the audience for being with us today listening hopefully change your mind as natalie said and implement the kangaroo mother care concept in your unit thank you so much for attending and please feel free get in contact with all our speakers with us as organization and help implementing kangaroo mother care in the future from the moment of birth. Thank you so much.